Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary and here we talk all things houseplants with a bit more emphasis on Hoyas. Nevertheless, today's video is a bit more generic. So I would like to go through um, the tools and products I use literally all the time for my house plants and for my balcony plants as well. Uh, because we have quite a few items, I think that without further ado we should get started. So first of all, something that I have found to be quite useful is my microscope. So I had bought this microscope from Amazon, I will put a link in the comments. It's actually a wireless one, as you can see here. And I have found it to be quite useful because, um, first of all, I can spot bugs with that. Especially the smallest ones, like Hoyas, for example, are notorious for getting flat mites or false mites. And uh, the microscope has proven to be quite uh, valuable in spotting this. Uh, if you do not have a microscope, a magnifying glass with good magnification can also work. But nevertheless, a microscope has proven to be extremely useful, especially for those owing Hoyas. Uh, besides the bugs, which is the unfortunate, let's say, part, uh, I'm also able to spot and take a few photos of my blooms when the pedunculus are start to form. Uh, so it's, you know, this is the nice part, let's say. So microscope is one of the items or tools, let's say, that I use all the time. Whenever I get a new plant, I always inspect carefully and check uh, for any bugs or any other issues with the plant. Next one is a bit more generic and it's my hygrometer. So this is actually quite useful for those who do not grow their plants in self-watering pots but they grow in the traditional, let's say, soil way. Um, I have found this to be quite useful especially if I'm not familiar with uh, specific plants and their needs or if I'm not 100% sure if the plant is um, needs to be watered or not. It has a different here as you can see this is you can find quite cheap in on either Amazon or even on plant stores. It has indications about the pH but I'm not really using this because I'm not sure how good this is. Uh, it has also indication about the light and about the, the water, how wet your plant is. Uh, the moisture um, indication is the one I've been using the most and I used to uh, use it this one at the beginning whenever I had plants like succulents or cacti because I'm most people are usually underwaterers, I'm exactly the opposite, I overwater my plants because I think that, you know, they're always thirsty and this is how I have killed quite a few plants and especially succulents, cacti and uh, similar plants that don't really need that much water. So especially for uh, new plant parents who grow their plants in soil or in more traditional methods, this is quite useful and um, it has indication whenever you know the plants gets to dry then it shows that okay yeah i can water how you use this this is uh, it has these rods and you just insert in the um, in your pot up to i would say around half of the pot size and then it goes automatically it goes here how moist or you know how wet or dry the plant is and then apparently you can water accordingly and um, i have not been using this for a while because now i'm familiar with most of my plants and their watering needs so i have a schedule for the plants and how often i should water them but in general for all let's say newbies this can prove quite useful the next uh, thing that I am using quite often, but this is mainly for people who do semi-hydro, is the pH meter. So I got this 
the hammer. It has here the thing that you insert inside the water actually. So I've been using this for my uh, plants that are in semi-hydro, actually most of my Hoyas that I have in pond. Normally I'm watering my plants with the um, fertilizing solution for either orchids or hydroponic solution, uh, but I take water for, from my fish tank, this one over here. Um, at the beginning, I didn't pay attention, so I was thinking that, okay, yes, fish tank, fish tank water is supposed to be, you know, the best for plants because it has all the fish poop and all the nutrients and the plants grow, da da, -da whatever. Um, what I didn't realize until a few months, maybe a year ago, is that uh, the fish tank water, depending on the fish apparently that you have and you keep, can be soft or hard. So I'm having some cichlids here. Cichlids uh, want a bit harder water. My tap water, which I use for watering, um, for uh, putting in my fish tank, is um, quite hard where I live. And the fish are thriving, they're growing, they're giving birth to other fish. You know, it was like, it was amazing. I was taking this fish water from the tank and I was watering my plants. Hoyas, for example, uh, don't need hard water, so it's better to put a water with a lower pH. Um, and then I thought that, okay, yeah, fish like hard water, Hoyas like soft water. What is the water that I'm actually putting in my uh, pond and in my uh, plants that I have in semi-hydro? And they realized that instead of around 6.5 uh, of pH that was needed, I was putting uh, water with a pH around 8.5. So yes, this is how I found out. And after I started using this in conjunction with um, pH up or down, depending on the, you know, the water hardness that you have, uh, when I started using with pH down, in my case, I started seeing that the plants were really blossoming, they were really thriving. So the pH meter, if you are using semi-hydro, is something that it's quite useful. Um, it is good to check your water before you put into your uh, plants, just to have an indication. Uh, I always do it, I now know the hardness of my water that I'm putting and I always put a pH down solution in the water before I uh, water the plants but nevertheless every single time I now check, I do big batches whenever I, I am uh, changing the water in the fish tank I have big batches of water that I, um, I store but before I put in the plants, I always check and I make the pH of the water um, the closest that the plants like. Now, uh, next one is, um, let's say, a bunch of, not tools, but a bunch of items that I am using also very, very often. First of it being hydrogen peroxide. So I have been using hydrogen peroxide diluted. I, I can only find 6% here, but usually the ideal is, or the most common is to find 3%. You still need to dilute a little bit. I can make a different video about hydrogen peroxide and its uses. Um, if you are interested, just let me know in the comments. But hydrogen peroxide is good if you're using instead of alcohol, so it can um, sanitize uh, pots, it, uh, it is very good for specific bugs, uh, it is good whenever you have, for example, mold, even mold in um, your semi-hydro solution. Sometimes in the past, for example, I had like two or three uh, plants that had mold on top. I just sprayed with hydrogen peroxide and this issue was resolved. Uh, in general, it is quite useful. Technically, it dissolves to water eventually, so it's not harmful for the plants, and this is the most important uh, fact. 
and uh, it is good for sterilization of um, tools it is good for uh, fighting uh, mold it is good for it has so many so many different uses you cannot even imagine uh, so this is usually I would say my go-to non-plant item besides this I'm also using alcohol so I have alcohol here which is actually in a concentration of let me check 75 I think yes so it's pure ethanol or oh, not pure 75 percent ethanol that you can find and this is also very very useful um I am using this mainly for mealybugs so mealybugs are not fans of alcohol uh, or let me put it this way since I have started using alcohol to treat any mealybugs I, hadn't, I haven't had this issue in my plants for a while so it definitely works it's the number one thing that you can use to treat mealybugs in your plants I had a gardenia in my balcony which had a huge huge infestation of mealybugs I have treated um, for around three weeks I would say that was last year and this year I got a huge plant with many flowers alcohol so alcohol generally works for mealybugs uh, whether this is for your Hoyas for your outdoor plants in general just have in mind that when you spray with alcohol you need to remove the plant from direct sunlight because the leaves will be scorched will be burned and uh, next item is neem oil so neem oil I have this one which is like it says neem oil for the garden you can it's pretty easy to find and although I hate the smell of neem oil I have to say this nevertheless it has proven to be quite useful for different bugs like aphids and a few other bugs that it's very easy to treat it's 100% natural so I'm trying not to use any chemical pesticides or fungicides for uh, all my plants whether these are outdoors in my balcony or they are indoors like my hoyas or my orchids for example neem oil is very very good and quite efficient in treating um, bugs like aphids uh, I normally do a solution with some water, some castile soap and the neem oil and a bit of alcohol and I spray thoroughly and it works every single time. Whenever I see some bugs go in my plants, like my tomatoes, for it, no, tomatoes actually I'm using sulfur to be honest, but other plants in general, whenever I see some bugs going, I just spray with this solution and it kills everything. Uh, it does not affect other um, insects like bees for example so this is why I'm trying to use always something which is non-chemical um, now as I mentioned about castile soap actually another very very useful thing is soap either castile soap or olive oil soap in particular this is the what I am using so I'm using olive oil soap uh, which if you dilute olive oil soap with either neem oil and alcohol in water or just alcohol in water and you spray it also is very very good bug prevention uh, so this is another group which is quite useful to have none of these cost much like hydrogen peroxide you can find in your local pharmacy in your local dispensary for a very low price same for the alcohol neem oil can be a bit more steep depending on where you buy it from whether it is from you know amazon or a plant shop the prices may differ so you need to check according to where you live and then castile soap or olive oil soap or any um, vegetable um, soap is also quite uh, inexpensive another item that I've been using quite a lot is my heat pad so I have um, around six months ago maybe a bit longer I bought a heating pad uh, for uh, my seedlings 
I cannot show it to you right now because I have it full of plants and small uh, trays and all my propagation boxes but um, it comes in different sizes I will put a link uh, in, the co in the description with uh, some links from Amazon that you can find something similar if you are interested in and I had actually made an experiment I had checked um, I had put the uh, seeds from different uh, plants like for example I had put some tomato seeds I had put some stephanotis now I have some stephanotis seeds um, growing and I had half of the seeds in exactly the same medium in everything exactly the same in the pots some on the heat pad and some on either indoors but not on the heat pad or on my balcony I have seen that the um, seeds that I have uh, on top of my heat pad have almost a hundred percent or in general very very good germination rate uh, heat helps a lot I have started using these also for my propagation so whenever I prop um, a Hoya for example um, all the Hoyas that I'm putting, whether I propagate in water or in um, Sphagnumus or in uh, Perlite or in Stratum, whatever I have put on top of the heating pad usually makes roots much much easier. So if you are into this and if you are actually propagating and you know grow uh, plants from seed and all this the heat pad is quite useful and um, it helps to start to kickstart the plant a little bit better and also if you are using propagation boxes for example uh, if you place them on top of um, a heating pad the humidity inside is working better for the plant this is from personal observation but uh, I never had any issues with you know overheating or whatever that said the next thing is takeaway boxes so takeaway boxes like this one for example this in the past used to be a very nice salad uh, after I finished my salad because I'm trying to recycle as much as I can I decided that okay this with the small dome that it has can be a very nice propagation box and this is one of the boxes that I've been using for my propagation so here I think I have let me see what I have okay I have some propagations from my linearis and uh, endoensis some moss which okay is uh, left over from my um, terrarium and here you see you see mini stephanot is growing Um, so in general propagation boxes you don't need anything fancy if you don't have much space like I do for example I'm using small takeaway boxes this is also good if you have uh, several dif different propagations and you want to group them together so the smaller for me personally the better because I'm grouping different plants uh, together depending on you know their needs or when I chop them or whatever um, another good option especially for um, plants that like humidity high humidity like Hoyas for example is Ziploc bags so you see this is one for example from IKEA this is one of the Ziploc bags that I've been using again and again actually I have used this ah, first time I used it for my limoniaca and um, it's quite similar to a prop box so if you have a small plant that you want to just let's say push a little forward and have it grow a little bit more this is very very useful or if you are starting a plant and you want it to be in a bit higher humidity you cannot put a whole pot a whole you know mini planter in here for example and this is why instead of because my all my propagation boxes are quite small I've been using these ziplock bags very useful um reusable and I have seen that the growth whenever I'm using prop bags 
for or ziplock bags for my propagation is quite okay i never had any issues the next two things are actual tools but i've been using this a lot with my plants one is soldering iron so i have been using this soldering iron for DIY pots uh, sometimes I have uh, pots that I've been doing um, semi-hydro in like but I use all kinds of random things I may use normal let's say proper pots that I have or mini planters that I had bought uh, for semi-hydroponics or I might be using yogurt cups um, cheese cups, uh, cottage cheese for example, I have just finished yesterday and I've been using this for um, a new mini self-watering pot that uh, I want to uh, make. So soldering iron is quite useful whenever you want to make holes in plastic. Um, you can take whatever you want, okay, the easiest thing is to use a soldering iron if you do not have this then you can apparently you know use a puncher and just punch the plastic this takes much effort much time i was doing this in the past i'm like nope i'm not doing it this anymore the soldering iron costs like i don't know 10 15 us dollars it's very low cost and you have it forever and this is i think one of my favorite tools that i have ever bought specifically for semi-hydro pots and um, my plants i don't use it for anything else i had never used it for anything else uh, besides opening holes but it is a life savior guys i'm telling you now the next one hot glue gun um, this I use a lot for my trellises uh, or I use for it really depends now for example uh, my Hoya Imbricata has grown a lot I have it in a wooden pole and it started going quite high so I need to put an extension there so in order to stick the two woods together I will be using my hot glue gun but in general I use it for my trellises whenever I um, put the jute twine on the trellises this is how I um, I have the jute twine stay in place uh, I have found it to be useful for several different things or for example I had a pot that had a hole but had a silicone stop. I wanted to use this for semi-hydro but uh, it was dripping some water. This is why I just insulated let's say the um, silicone around the hole with the hot glue gun so uh, you know like the only thing that stops you is your imagination it has several different uses i personally use it a lot the next thing is something very common you already have you don't need to buy this and it's plant shears or scissors what i would highly recommend is to have um plant shears scissors whatever dedicated just for your plant you can use your kitchen scissors if you don't have anything else in hand of course nevertheless um i i do it sometimes to be honest i'm not saying that i've never used you know my kitchen scissors but i have something which is dedicated for my plants to take cuttings to you know whenever i propagate if i want to cut plants make them smaller to cut a few leaves whatever i use it all the time and i have this which is dedicated just for that because after each and every use i always uh, sterilize with hydrogen peroxide or with alcohol whatever i have in hand uh, i've been doing this so i know that every time that i touch the scissors or the scissors is always sterilized i don't need to go and sterilize again from scratch because i might forget so i might transfer from one plant to another um, diseases or fungus or whatever that i don't want to transfer apparently 
And the next thing is a, also a group of items which is mainly for those who have plants that uh, like to be trellised. And this is either plant clips or plant wire or plant velcro. So I have been using all of them depending on you know the plant, depending how thick the stem is and so on and so forth. I have this clips that I use all the time, either my dragonfly clips or my standard orchid clips. I use this for my Hoyas mainly. Um, or plant velcro. So plant velcro, actually it's just velcro, but because it's green, I guess this is why it's called plant velcro. Uh, it's quite useful because it does not suffocate the plant. Sometimes the clips, you know, have very specific diameter. So if you have plants with thick stem, uh, like, I don't know, from tomatoes up to pff, whatever and the stem is growing thicker if you use this you will suffocate the stem eventually this is why you can use the plant velcro because you can adjust it if you see that you know it's too tight then you can make it a bit larger same for the plant wire plant wire I've been using a lot for my balcony because it is metallic so it's quite sturdy it has the plastic outside so it's weatherproof in a sense and um, mainly or if I don't have any clips for example in hand I might be using this but for outdoor plants I usually use the plant wire for all my indoor plants like my hoyas for example that I'm, i am tracing i use the either plant clips like orchid clips or the plant velcro and the last thing that i've been using is plant tags so i have this actually it was a gift this for example from i had bought a uh, moss pole i think and it had this as gifts Plant tags are quite useful if you are collecting different plants and you don't remember the names. Hoyas, for example. I know that people with Hoyas can get quite addicted. <laughs> I'm speaking, you know, out of personal experience. Um, so, at least at the beginning, it's good to remember, or if you have too many plants, like I do, you cannot possibly remember every single Hoya species name. So, sometimes for specific ones I use plant tags. Actually, I am tagging all my plants to be honest, all my Hoyas at least, because I, I'm keeping some other information as well. So, besides the name, you can put when you purchased or when you got the plant, you can put um, whatever data you want to have on record, you can put there. So, all in all, these are the plant tools and products I've been using all the time. Most of them are not expensive, they're not hard to get, and they can be quite useful. Most importantly for me, they don't occupy much space. So, I have everything grouped in a box and I use whatever I want whenever I want. Um, so, guys, that's it i will be putting links for most of the items i got off of amazon or some suggestions about similar items to the ones that i have and in case you want to buy this is not sponsored by any <laughs> means uh, it's just you know items that i have personally been using and i have found to be quite okay in terms of quality or value for money Okay guys, that's it for today. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Your help would be much appreciated. And I will see you all next time.